Mic check, 212, bitch. What's up, guys? It's DDP, back with another quick edition of college football, specifically Big 12 football roundup. Now, first and foremost, let's kick things off with the biggest outcome of the week. This really makes for an interesting matchup for the Big 12 championship game because now the blueprint, the model we've been working on all season is now in complete disarray. Now, for that to happen, two things had to occur. One, Texas had to handle Iowa State in Austin, which Iowa State's not a bad team at all, so that was a challenge. Texas managed to get the win, so that was first and foremost. In addition, however, the West Virginia Mountaineers had to beat the Oklahoma State Cowboys in Stillwater if they were going to face off next week against Oklahoma for a chance to face off in the Big 12 championship game. Now, they still have a chance, West Virginia does, because unfortunately for West Virginia, unfortunately uh, for our own Adam Proctor, it did not work out in his team's favor. West Virginia still has a shot. If West Virginia beats Oklahoma next week, I believe it's a Texas versus West Virginia rematch in the Big 12 championship game. If Oklahoma wins, it's an OU Texas rematch, which is equally juicy, even if I thought Texas admittedly was dead in the water after they took a couple L's over the last couple weeks. But here we find ourselves. If OU beats West Virginia, I think Texas gets in over West Virginia for the Big 12 championship game. And Texas is out of any contention for the playoff, of course. But for them, winning a Big 12 championship and o ending OU's three-year run of dominance. Well, really, if we're talking OU's run of dominance, OU's won like 12 Big 12 championships compared to Texas as the second-place team with three. But I digress. They're on a three-peat actively. Texas has everything to play for in this case. And Texas, the only way Texas... No, you know what? There's not really a way Texas doesn't. As long as Texas takes care of business next week, they're in. And I'll get to who they're facing off with here momentarily. But let's talk about this week first. Uh, I already started here on the West Virginia-Oklahoma State game, so we'll start there. Now for West Virginia, they had everything on the line. Oklahoma State, even though they've had a number of losses this year, they're still a tough team in Stillwater, and that really, really showed itself. Oklahoma State goes down and fights like hell, comes back from a pretty stout deficit. I want to say 31-14, rallies all the way back in the final minute to take a 45-41 victory from West Virginia. West Virginia made it a game late, like they got into position all the way down to the Oklahoma State 14-yard line. Uh, with one second left on the clock, so one down, and the throw just didn't connect, didn't go. But even then, Will Greer made an impressive throw that got him down there, gave him a chance. It just did not pan out. Here's something I wanted to point out, and this was a screen cap note I took because I was thinking it too at the time. This is from, let's see here, this is from Chris Anderson. The fact that West Virginia did not use a timeout on that Greer scramble cost the team at least two more opportunities in the end zone or at the end zone rather that's on dana the head coach i agree completely i was very baffled by some of the clock management late in that game and it cost them i think i really do think that that cost them if they had a couple more cracks at it from the 14 i think they would have got it but that's the way it worked out oklahoma state 45 41 winner uh, west virginia still has a shot but any shot at playoff is gone now it comes down to can they beat Oklahoma in Morgantown next week. That's going to be a hell of a game all the same, especially with OU's defense continuing to crater. But it, it's going to be two massively powerful offenses and two very suspect defenses. OU's put up at least 48 points in six straight games, I want to say. So expect a lot of points. Take the over is what I'm saying next week. Elsewhere in Norman, no you have Oklahoma winning 55 to 40 against Kansas. 40? 40. You gave up 40 to Kansas. The hell is wrong with this defense, man? 
Uh, no, I know I didn't talk any stats on the West Virginia game. Don't worry about it. This is a shorter, condensed version. Uh, for Oklahoma, the only thing I'm going to point out on this, Kyler Murray accounts for five touchdowns, one pick. Uh, Kansas ran the ball however the hell they wanted, and that's the biggest problem Oklahoma has. That is something that West Virginia has shown they can do as well. So, again, I expect a high-scoring game. More than anything, the reason Oklahoma's 10-1 and this year is because they've got Kyler Murray and you don't. They have the human cheat code who even even Texas uh, who gave Oklahoma was beating the snot out of them for a while. Kyler Murray brought them back. Tied up the game after being 21 down in the second half. I think in the fourth quarter no less. Yeah, in the fourth quarter. So nothing, nothing to sleep on there. If Kyler Murray is on point and on his game, he'll eat you alive and he'll single-handedly win OU the the conference I feel but you know that's getting a little ahead of it I just feel like he is clearly the best player in the conference and if he's on his game good luck unless you're army and you just keep the ball away from him by eating up every second of clock and he gets four possessions in the game oh you 55 to 40 seriously okay I mentioned Texas 24 10 over Iowa State in Austin Big bounce back for Texas. Again, they had been stumbling the last couple weeks. The loss to West Virginia, the loss to Oklahoma State. Good for them to right the ship. And hey, now they got everything right ahead of them. Everything to play for. Uh, as long as, I, I think they're in regardless, as long as they take care of business in this game. Again, Iowa State's not a bad team, but they beat them by 14 in a low scoring affair. Next week, Texas has Kansas at Kansas. So unless Kansas with their eight losses unless they want to give them the trouble they gave us which i don't see happening because texas is a better defense uh that'll be really interesting nothing else to talk about on that kansas state at k-state beats texas tech 21-6 tech the only thing i'll say on tech they still don't have bowman they're still running with duffy at quarterback this was one of those games where it was painfully obvious they were rolling out the backup quarterback so Unfortunate for Tech, they showed a lot of promise and growth this year, I felt, but ultimately they are still, well, let, let's be honest, Cliff Kingsbury's squad stays 7-5. and five. That's just how they are in the Big 12. What's their record right now? 5-6? and six? I think it's 5-6 and six after this game now. So, yeah, they'll, they'll probably end up something like 7-5, seven 7-6. and, five, seven and six. Yep, that sounds right. And finally, TCU in a boring slugfest wins 16-9 at Baylor. Again, TCU finally put a couple wins together after losing like five straight games. But all the same, it's still, it's still way too little too late. They're just trying to build and grow on things. They sorted out their offense actually by sitting their freshman phenom Robinson. Or excuse me, Collins? Is that what I'm thinking of? Robinson. Why am I blanking on names? Collins played in this game. I think I'm talking about uh, Robinson. Shows you how relevant they've been this year that I'm suddenly blanking on a guy who OU played a couple weeks ago. All the same, that was the Big 12 wrap-up for this week. Again, next week is the big game. The game of the week for the conference. Oklahoma at West Virginia. That is going to be a stellar offensive game. This isn't even, to me, defense optional. This is defense take the bye week basically OU's defense will stay in Norman West Virginia's might you know be in the city but they're not going to be on the field probably <laughs> this is probably going to be something like a Kyler Murray six touchdown game where it's like three running three passing this this will be interesting but I'm very interested to see I'm excited about the possibility of an OU Texas rematch not just because if you're Oklahoma and you're looking to make a real case to finally get over the hump and get into the college football playoff picture. They're caught at six right now, last I checked. This is your opportunity to do that because the one team that beat you and is still a somewhat respectable defense, you get the rematch, you beat the tar out of them, and you're at that point on like a, what, seven game win streak? There's no way you ignore that, presumably. But it'll be interesting to see how that lines up. Again, it'll be the first year ever that you've had two matchups with OU and Texas bragging rights man all ultimately on the line texas gets them again they deserve it they absolutely deserve it because 
They took it to OU for the most part in the Red River rivalry earlier this year. And even though OU staged one of the most furious comebacks I've ever seen, not quite enough out of the defense uh, to get it done. Couldn't get the final stop they needed. And Sam Ellinger does not turn the ball over. That's the big thing. Texas has big receivers who just destroy OU secondary. OU secondary is dreadful. And Sam Ellinger will not turn the ball over. That's all you need to know, really, on the matchup for the Big 12 title game when that comes. Kyler Murray is going to have to find a way to put up 60 in that game, probably, for OU to win. It's a damn good offense, but uh, Texas is also a good defense, so that does feel like a bit of a big ask. But we'll see. This is the fun of the Big 12 season. That's all my time for this show, guys. Thank you for watching. Hang tight. Uh, we got more content coming out later. Probably only a couple more weeks now of this Big 12 football roundup show. But plenty of Mavericks and Cowboys talk to go. Cowboys got like six games. Mavericks are early in their season, 15, 16 games into their season. So hang tight. Stick with it. And remember, every legend was once a prospect. Salute.